I accidentally stumbled across a new way to make biochar. I was watching Jeff Lawton how he makes biochar using one of these steel garbage cans. So I ordered one from Home Depot and I didn't realize how big this thing was. It barely fit in my 55 gallon burn barrel. So I filmed this biochar experiment so you can see my thought process as I was going through all the steps here trying to learn how to make this work. And we ended up making some really nice char and I was able to make this process relatively quick. So I have this metal garbage can right here and oddly enough it fits pretty good to actually be the lid on this as well. So first I'm going to get a raging fire going on in here. I put this block at the bottom for the can to sit on, but it really doesn't reach. So I'm going to put some big pieces of wood towards the bottom. We're going to light a really hot fire, get some hot coals going. And then I'm going to set this inside, which means it's going to be raised up a little bit. And the idea is as it burns, it's going to sink itself down until eventually this seal here closes off the top and we let the fire die out on its own. I have a lot of arborist chips that are dry, some dead branches. I'm going to get some dead raspberry canes to put in here. All of this, I'm going to load this 31 gallon can up with it. And hopefully when this is all said and done, all this stuff is become biochar. Got her all stacked up. Drilled some holes in the lid here. I'm gonna start a raging inferno here. I got some bigger logs to help it cook longer once this gets started. We got some stacked functions going on here because while I'm doing this burn here, I'm gonna be making wood ash in the main burn, which is gonna to go to my chickens. I'm also taking this opportunity to burn the asparagus from last year, the dead stuff, to maybe take out some of the asparagus beetles and hopefully making some biochar along the way. All right, so we got a really hot fire going here. So I'm gonna go ahead, make sure this lid's on tight. We got some rain coming in. Take this and gently place it inside here. So as this wood burns, this is going to sink down. And while it's still cool, I'm going to go ahead and toss some more of this stuff to the side, get a fire going. Starting to warm up pretty quick. Take some of these sticks here, jam these on these sides so the fire can climb up. We're going to throw some extra holes in the bottom here because I see we're just kind of starting to smoke. This is heating up a lot, but I want to get more air down here. Make sure these hot coals stay hot. Look at that. Look at that flame coming out. All right, there we go. She's heating up. She's heating up. Yeah, Look at all that extra airflow. Oh yeah, here we go. Sometimes you just gotta learn on the fly. Look at that. Just one little hole. And now she is raging. Yep. Don't touch it. It's hot. Let's add another couple holes for good luck. That is raging in there. Look at that. It's burning that rock. Let's do one over here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That'll heat her up. Let's go in for a closer look here. You can see the flames coming up the side, trying to reach into the sky. All that smoke coming out of the holes there means that we are making biochar and adding those holes on the bottom was a great idea. Sometimes you just gotta learn while you're doing it. So I'm using this little rock right here to keep my gap even around. I think I'm gonna go in the woods and find some more dead sassafras. And sassafras is highly flammable and try to jam it straight down so this fire can burn up the side. I've never tried making root beer out of the sassafras. I guess that's what you can do with it. But the fact that it's highly flammable has helped me out a lot. So I'm just gonna stack it right on the sides here and hope this fire creeps up. It's getting a little dangerous, getting some burnt fingers. Just don't touch anything metal, because you'll burn your finger and you're gonna have a bad time because burning your finger 
is a bad time. See that flame creeping up there? Let's yeah. get her to creep up. Sometimes you just gotta feed her and let her eat. And go put some wood chips down in the orchard, but this is just way too exciting. Robert, can you go get more sassafras? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Instead of standing around and watching this burn, I'm gonna go do something productive. We're gonna come back tomorrow when this is cooled off and see the results. And this is where I came to the realization that occasionally popping the lid off this was a good idea to let some of that extra moisture out. And I would do this until a raging flame appeared. And then I would put the cover back on to extinguish that flame. I found if I popped this lid just a little bit to let all that smoke out and then let the flame burst in there like five or six times, that would help burn off some of that glaze creosote and moisture get a little extra smoke out here that dried us up a little bit but it was incredibly dangerous there is a lot of pressure in here and when you pop it open and it finally finds that oxygen you'll get a big burst of air that comes out with the flame so you just gotta be careful but then the good part was i don't have to let this thing go out its own once i had that flame appear so many times i was able to look in here and see that i had just a little bit of white coating on these. So they were getting ready to go to ash, but before they could, I just poured water here to extinguish them. So when you make the char, originally it is hydrophobic. So once you add the water in there, it helps get rid of some of the hydrophobic properties. We were kind of killing two birds with one stone. And to get rid of the water that I poured in here, I let it sit on the fire a little bit longer just to cook some of that water up. Then I dumped the rest of it out and let it dry. I am going to do a full tutorial on how I make this biochar with this garbage can and how I got this garbage can at Home Depot and how it works perfect for me in a 55 gallon drum. I just wanted to show my thought process when I try something new like this, how it's not always perfect to start, but you start working out the kinks as you go. And this whole process should only take about a half hour. Stay tuned for that video coming shortly. I'm gonna take this char, I'm gonna crush it up and give it to the chickens. The chickens are going to mix my biochar with their compost and charge it up for me and it's gonna be ready for the garden. Don't be scared to try new things. Thanks for watching.